Welcome to the Brook, bearing clusters of truth with a splash of common sense. Welcome to uh, the Brook on Canaan Radio. Once again, we're here in the studio with David, Pastor Reeves, Good uh, hey. Peter, and Hi. JT up in the booth. JT's the one that was silent the partner. The music. Yeah, he's especially silent today. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see here. I don't have anything really to say. I think it's the only way JT uh, actually gets any attention. I mean, every he messes week. something up. Yeah. Right the, yeah. That's it. That's what it is. Seem to get it right. JT, can you give Pastor Reeves just a, a notch or two and then turn me down? I need a notch. Number. As long as these got plugged in correctly. If you can see. Whoa, I feel like I got louder. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, Did I you turn up number eight? Yes. Test. Testing one, two. Did Pastor Testing. Reeves test I'm doing good. Yeah. Not feel yeah, great. Turn his up a little better. more, Pastor Reeves. Wow, more. really? Louder? No, no, no. That's Sounds really good to me. Too, wow, too far. Too nice. far. Sounds pretty deep. Testing, Mine's testing. You nice. have now experienced the testing of the emergency broadcast channel. If you can see, uh, Pastor's got a new mic. Ooh. 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 Tune into YouTube now if you yeah. want to see the new microphone. Anyway, so there's that. Um, let's see here. You can <laughs> request a song during the show, 920-940-8275. JT, can you turn me down a little bit? <laughs> Blowing my eardrums out here. It's I need mine turned up. Remember, you can turn it. Number five. No, that's Turn the, me down, down just yeah, a little that's bit. That's overall. It's just his library. A little or bit more. Turn me down a little bit more. I'm going to have to check every cable and make sure they plugged five into five and four into four. And Yeah, we'll check those here in a second. Okay. <laughs> There's five. <laughs> All right, it's just the number that's on there. 920-940-8275. You can uh, request a song there or send us a direct message on any of our social media using our handle at Canaan underscore radio. Gentlemen, welcome to Open Mic. It's good to be here. It is. Well, the mic is open. Since you brought up the subject, I'll just talk about the mic. This is one of two mics that we purchased for our recording studio. We have a uh, project that's uh, been waiting in the wings for the last couple years. And uh, we're going to do a CD here at Canaan Media and uh, need to upgrade some of our equipment. So um, this is one of two of the mics that are for the vocals. And uh, mm-hmm. this week we got in also uh, the piano mics. You kind of played around with those mics a little bit this yeah, week, we son. a little bit of recording with those. How'd just that to go? Kinda, it went well. It went really well. And then... Uh, I took the recording home and kind of played with that a little bit. Sounds pretty good. So explain what that's going through. So the two microphones that we have, they're made specifically to record piano because one of the hardest instruments to accurately reproduce is the piano. So Mm. we made sure to get mics that fit that. And then we also have a, um, it's a recording interface, but it's made specifically to allow us to emulate other devices. So instead of spending 50,000 on you know, equipment for a studio, you can spend way less than that, like way less than that, and get something that emulates it and sounds just like it's used in other studios That's for the awesome. same thing. So it's awesome. Right. And the sound of this mic is actually sounds pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a little bit of a buzz somewhere from somebody. I'm not sure what it is, but we'll find out what that is during the break. Is it so, high? Probably. You probably messed with your mic and mm-hmm. just messed everything up. Buzz. So buzz off, Peter. Buzz. Whoa, whoa, wait. It's his? It is the new one? Oh. Okay. Did you just turn him down a little bit? Is that what it was? I don't hear anything. You're probably okay now. You don't You don't hear it? Maybe I'm just turned up too loud. I don't hear a buzz. I hear just like a it went, faint. It's, down. I yeah, it's, it did. It, it was, was a down small there. static buzz. Yeah. That's all. Oh, no, well, now I hear it. That's because wow, he, turned, he turns you back up. So it's just yeah. the, the gain. Oh. But that's okay. Okay, uh, let's see. Open. Okay, so we finished talking about the mics. Let's start recording here shortly. Uh, we got some sidewalks put in this week. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was a lot of fun. So we get to. Well, when we took the properties over, um, we had sidewalks going to the east. No sidewalks going to the west, and the the building actually sits closer to the west side of the property. So it's kind of weird that there was no sidewalks that went to the building uh, on the, some of the doors that were on the west side of the property. There were, I think there were two doors on the west side of the property. There were two, yes. One then heading we to the... went down to one door and then put another door down the audit- auditorium. Anyway, so been wanting to put some uh, walkways in, and, and uh, guys got that done this week. So praise the Lord for that. And then uh, the girls' dorm garage is 
painted with one color so far. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, one more to go. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know you did that the other day, and I got back. Uh, I just did it like yesterday. Yeah, I know. I just didn't because I saw you out of camp. So. Oh. I thought you you hadn't got to it. So anyway, I pulled you didn't in see at like, me covered in paint. I didn't. I, didn't, I wasn't real observant. <laughs> it's okay. Pull in at like ten thirty, and it's dark out. And I'm like, something's different about this place. What is it? Um, uh, couldn't put your finger on it. Couldn't. It's okay. And then I figured it out. It's like ah, it's gray. It does look it does look nice though. We got our uh, lawn sprayed for weeds. Yeah. This all the week. Dandelion. All the dandelions are dead. Did you turn them off? Did you turn them down? I don't know. The buzz is gone. I can still hear him, the so buzz, we're good. Got rid of the buzz. I think. I think. It just it just all of a sudden yeah. changed. It's all in our head. Like, what, this what it is. That's exactly. What it is. Anyway, so that's our week basically. Not in the head. That's the. Let's. Uh, are we testing? We're gonna test it, I guess, right here. Tell us. Tell us something that happened in your week in the comments, and we'll read them. Frank we will. Said, Frank <laughs> yeah. says it's hard to hear everyone. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'm drinking um, literally dew sent from God. It's not Mountain Dew. Is it what? Pepsi. Pepsi is not dew. <laughs> but it's it's sent from God regardless. Okay. <laughs> this is the first week I've drank I've drank soda out of this cup. Well we uh well, I don't know what's going on with my mic. <laughs> sounds really weird. <laughs> it sounds really uh bassy or something muffled. Ha- something happened to it because it was clear. Now I feel like you're hearing me through that mic, not this one. No, I saw them. So who knows what's going on here? Might just be the difference. Take this time to text a friend, tell them to tune in and listen to us uh, test our mics. <laughs> and request a song. By and texting. request a song. Yeah, request a song. 920. You would think after 17 weeks. Well, we just switched. We would mic. actually be able to. Not Come on, people. Phone. If oh. you text in the next minute, you will probably guarantee to hear your song. We need to get on five. the radio during hey. the broadcast. Um, Ray Lynn figured out something about my best friend. Uh, Lindsay said, I moved stuff in my room and deep cleaned it. Now, that is a miracle. Wow. Well, wait, deep clean. Deep cleaned it. What does that mean? She moved stuff into her room Well, and then deep cleaned. How is that possible? I don't, I don't know. know. That's amazing when it bus kid cleans the room it's wow. just simply a miracle Praise hey it's Lord. coming back it's coming back the microphone is coming back it's like it's coming back uh, brother frank asked about the potential new property yes brother frank we will know something um we actually have two different properties uh, the same owner owns them so in the middle of june i believe we should now I'm gone. Now he's, he's off. He's I'm gone again. There we go. I'm am I back? Yes. Do, is there a reason you keep turning me off? I'm I'm inquiring minds like to know. Brother Frank said, I heard you guys have potential new property. I was just talking about that. I was literally not listening to you. I know. <laughs> wow. I know. Really? He just read that. <laughs> was, did you really? No. He did. Was in, he was, was about in, to start. Mid, I was mid, in middle of June. Land. We'll know something in the middle of June. <laughs> Couple more weeks. All right. Yep. Yep. Amen. Yep. 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 Then a bonfire. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> like the whole radio, the whole radio world. Has no idea what that means. Exactly. Except, That's except, okay. Except us in here. You're like, you oh, need to come to church. Bonfire. You need to come to church <laughs> at North Five Baptist Church to find out what Brother, that means. Brother Tommy gave us a song request. Rejoice, your name is written in heaven. I don't know who Brother Tommy is, but I appreciate him requesting something. He's, he requested that song by me. I know I sing that song, but I don't think I've ever recorded that song. I don't think it's out. On, I mean, Do you hear? So sing it for him live. Maybe. That would not be good. Will can uh, always play it on the Ooh. Acapulco. What? Acapulco? <laughs> Sounds like a... You can anyway, play it on the piano Hey, Brother you. Tommy, tell us how you heard about us. Mm-hmm. Just We're just curious. Are you going to build there? Fuzz? We're going to watch people build there. Fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'd like to that, see done. <laughs> that, is, that is what we would like. <laughs> I, I think it's uh, very entertaining as I talk with the men, how much they talk about having other people do it and... Uh, 
I keep going, but you have no idea how much that's going to cost. But hey, we no can idea drink. How much that's going to cost? But you have no idea how Jesus much that's going to cost. Jesus paid it all. Yes, he did say that. <laughs> Cattle on a thousand hills, we wealth just, in every we, mine. We need to have Amen. faith. <laughs> you do understand we have no uh, millionaires in our church. Faith. We have JT, brother JT. I mean, I know his dad. I'm sure he's a millionaire. Sure, close to it. It's all about you know. We just you never know when a million millionaire might walk through the door. You a million just, what though? Um, Billionaire could have a billion pennies. That's true. How much money would that be? I don't know. It'd probably still be a <laughs> probably a decent amount. <laughs> probably more than I've got. That's a lot. <laughs> Never mind. We'll take a, a, a billion penny air or however you want to put that. You want me to test my mic? This is my voice. Um, Lindsay. Test your mic. Yeah, I can test my mic. Testing one, two, it's one, two, three, four. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay uh, said she got a friend to come to church on Sunday. Is that this Sunday, Lindsay, or is that next Sunday? So in our youth class, we are having a special push on May 31st. We are trying to have 15 in our class. 15. I, don't think, I think the highest you've ever had is like 11 or something like that. We're normally between 8 and 10. But, so we're trying to push back up to 15. And I think we'll hit it because i got a couple. Uh, I think Lindsay's bringing a visitor, and then I've got a couple more that are haven't been able to come because of COVID-19. But now the restrictions are lifted. They should be coming back. Um, so the next big special day on our church calendar, Brother Frank wants to know. Next big day? It'll is be this next Sunday. Super Soaker Sunday. Super Water War. Water War. Or Super Soaker, I guess. Whatever. Yeah, I've been calling it Super Soaker all week. Whatever. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Super Soaker Water War. I think he's been taking drugs. Uh, Me? Yeah. I had ibuprofen. Oh, hell. Uh, he's feeling good or something. Because it's like every time he starts talking, he goes... <laughs> <laughs> and I had caffeine just a few minutes ago. And it that's ate about an hour ago. It, that's probably what it getting is. Getting my energy level back up. <laughs> it's, <laughs> a, it's a Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I had some Sour Patch Kids. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh can, yes. can you test your mic one more time, Mike? Who had the caffeine? Who had the caffeine? I'm drinking. He's right now. drinking caffeine right now. So. When I say that, I mean like only caffeine. Yeah, oh, yeah. only me. That, that, only him. That's this, a nice can way I talk to you? <laughs> can I? Uh, Losing us. Does, I would like to, but he keeps talking. So, <laughs> testing one, two, one, two. Ooh, that's terrible. Ooh. Testing one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, those that are listening, we are so sorry that you have to put up with this. This is really not. Uh, uh, I, I don't think the guys mind doing things this way, but it just the old fogey in me doesn't like this. Welcome to we could just to the sit down and and things are ready to go. But uh, unfortunately, at the last second, we're throwing new mics on. Hey, let's try this out. And uh, so thank you for your patience. I think it sounds good. It sounds wonderful. Good enough for the program. Let's just press on. It it still has a buzz, but, I mean, what are you going to do? JT messed everything up. (laughs) If a human was cloned. Would it have a soul? What? Depends on who cloned it. Was it grown in a test tube? Why are we talking about that? <laughs> who asked that? Brother Frank said, deep question. Oh. If a human was cloned, would he have a soul? Yes, he would have two, actually. <laughs> he have two souls? <laughs> Everybody has two souls. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Well, unless he only has one leg. In which case... He only has one. Okay, fine. Brother JT said, wouldn't he have three? So yes, technically. (laughs) But at least he'd have two for sure. (laughs) I don't know what's going on up there, but can we we land this plane? Yes. Good. This is what... I'm gone. We really need to go on to the song. What's the first song? I'm no longer here. That's a great song, I'm No Longer Here. Is that a song? Hello. How come, Hello? We, hey, how come it's a circle we go. back through? Yeah, I can kind of hear a little bit of something else. Is someone's volume on down there? Sounds yeah, our volume. Volume's on down there. Yeah. Yours is on. Mine wasn't on. Your, your audio is on. Let's go to the song. Go to a song? Okay, let's do uh, the Please first go song. To a song. 
Request a song at 940-8275. We'll start with About the Cross. This song was sung by our fathers for and requested by JT. Oh, they don't even have it ready. I was, I was, I thought you meant that you were ready. Nope. There it goes. For breaking news here and around the country, welcome to Heard It Through the Grapevine. The spin starts here. Heard it through the grapevine, where we bring news and tidbits from the ministry here in North Platte and around the world, sometimes. I'm around the world. I'm around the world. Um, that song that just played was actually one of the songs that we had recorded back, when was that? Back in 2016? 2000, a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. But now, uh, this summer, we are releasing a new CD, so stay tuned on how you can get that. That's the first thing I heard it through the grapevine. It's going to have more than... Ten songs. Right? It's, it's going to have, yes. That's the plan. Yes. That'll be fun to get started on. we got a couple of weeks, and we'll be into it, mm-hmm. doing it. Yep. And then on top of that, big announcement for season one of The Brook. Who wants to give the announcement? <laughs> the fina- the finishing of season one? Yeah, the finishing that. of season in one. Seasoning. Seasoning. <laughs> mm. Mm. We'll throw a little something in there to season it up. I'm really lost here at this point because I don't know what you're talking about. Season. We're going through the last, for the last seven weeks of the season. Oh, well, I, I didn't understand. Why don't you t- just tell us? Yeah, okay, Dave. well, I Go wanted ahead. to give so you the opportunity to say it. So for the next seven weeks, we will be going through the Baptist distinctives during the Not Milk segment. And that will put us all the way to July 4th will be the final episode of season one of The Brook. That's awesome. It is. So get ready now to learn your ba- Baptist distinctives. Get some friends to tune in. And, of course, this isn't just a boring college class of learning Baptist distinctive, right. but it's where we all get to argue and <laughs> say stuff. And you can interact. That offends other so people. So when things yeah. are said, you can be like, yeah, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. That's exciting. It is. It's good. Uh, looking forward to Father's Day coming up. Mm-hmm. That's a heard it through the grapevine. Mm-hmm. Going to have a big day. We are. Family fun jumps and... All that good stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Next, <laughs> family, you said, family, uh, family fun. We're gonna have jump. We're gonna do all kinds of stuff that someday. It's gonna yeah. be blast. June twenty first. June twenty first. Anything else on? I heard it through. Hey, uh, big youth camp. We're having youth camp this summer. I'm excited about that. I don't know when we're gonna do it. I'm ho- I hopefully like in the first week of August. That's sort of when I'm thinking would be a great. But that's the first time we've ever done that. So I'm excited about that. So if you uh, are a teenager in my class, get ready to do a lot of car washes, candy bar selling. Hallelujah. World's finest chocolates. Cookie making. <laughs> Growing up, I remember selling those all the time. Mm-hmm. Egg selling. Egg, yes. Egg selling. Egg-a-thon is. Egg-a-thons. Works great. Yep. You want to explain what an egg-a-thon is? Since so people, you, go to, you go to a door. You go to a door. And the way that we did it when we first started was you'd go to your first door and you would say, I'm not doing this fundraiser for, you know, whatever we're doing it for. And be like, I was wondering if I could have an egg, if you would donate an egg. Mm-hmm. And they just look at you like, what? And you're like, because I'm going to take that egg and I'm going to go to your next door neighbor. And I'm going to try and sell that egg <laughs> to them. And usually people get a good kick out of it. You know, they'd give you an egg and they might even give you a donation at the same time. Yeah. And then you go to the next door and you'd be like, you know, I'm doing this, doing this fundraiser. And your neighbor was kind enough to donate this egg. <laughs> and I was wondering if I could sell this egg to you for a donation. <laughs> and people just would, they would laugh, have a good time with it. And um, we'd raise money that way. So. It was funny because when, I f- when we first learned of it in Colorado Springs, that they did it there. I thought, I'll never work here in North Platte. That, had to, that was like the best, mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the best it's money the, raiser. It's the most embarrassing as a teenager. 
If you don't, uh, if you don't know how to, what you're explaining, then yeah, yes, because yeah. we've had some people come to the door and you ask if you could have an egg, and they're like, "Can I borrow an egg?" And they're like, "This lady's like, oh, you need some eggs." She goes to her she first brings time, a whole carton, a whole carton, carton of yeah, eggs. Like, like, here you go. I'm not starving. Like, no, I just feet, though, that's not what they're, what we're trying to do. So. And then, and then you, if you go with somebody, I remember growing up. Sometimes you get partnered with somebody that would start talking and be like, "I have this, I have this egg. I, do you want to buy it?" <laughs> and they would just stop and you're just, just like you. awkward 100% like oh my soul it's like no yeah so if you couldn't explain it it didn't work out so well but <laughs> as long as you had someone there who could be like it's okay it, they're not weird I promise <laughs> and I don't think anyone ever took the, like it was a rare occasion where they would buy the egg from you usually they gave you the donation and let you because they're afraid right. where did this egg come from I, you know? I had well that's one, what I would do I would just throw it right in the trash yeah. I had happened. one lady that when she came to the door, and you always have one person every once in a while. When she came to the door, I explained it to her, and she goes, go wash cars or something. <laughs> and slams the wow. door. I was like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> good point, good point. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be fun. Go I'm wash. not going. Uh, I was going to ask you to. Oh, you're going to, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah manage yeah. one of those teams. Yes. So, so fundraising. For Teen King. Yes. That's yep. how that started. Yep. That's good. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be a fun week. I'm excited about it. We can, can we can go to a song. Camp I don't got think all we cleaned up and stuff this week yeah, too, so Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Okay. We can go to another song. I I don't know what song that is, but oh it says I I got the song. Hang on. <laughs> and God We Still Trust, requested by Lindsay by Sacred Heritage. We'll be right back. It's not milk, people. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Not Milk segment on The Brook. Tonight we are examining an issue that, to be quite frank, is a milk issue. In fact, it is probably the most milky of milk issues that Christians need to understand after salvation. The Bible is our sole authority for faith and practice. Now, this is a commonly touted and shouted theme that I have heard in churches since I can remember. But what does the statement mean, and do you agree with this statement, and more importantly, do you live what this statement is supposed to stand for? So what does the statement mean? Let's just begin with defining each of the, the words in this phrase. Let's begin with the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. King James Bible, we as Baptists has, have historically held. The King James Bible is the inspired, 2 Timothy 3.16, preserved, Matthew 5.18, inerrant, Psalm 12.6, the word of God once delivered to the saints. The word our. The word our pertaining to or belonging to us. This refers to us as Baptists, as Christians, as churches, as individuals. This means you. Soul. The word soul. Single. Being or acting without another. Individual. Only. Authority. Legal power or a right to command or to act. Power rule, or sway over. Faith. Faith is a belief, the agent of the mind to the truth of what is declared by another, resting on his authority and veracity without other evidence. And practice. Practice is the frequent or customary actions, a succession of acts of a similar kind or in a like employment, as the practice of rising early or of dining late, the practice of reading a portion of scripture morning and evening, the practice of making regular entries or accounts, the practice of virtue or vice. Habit is the effect of practice. Now, Baptist distinctives that we as independent Baptists have held are under attack within our own circles these days. The Bible is no longer our sole authority. Instead, we turn to men, to government, to worldly opinions about what we believe without caring or seeking the declared word of the God who created us. Hmm. And that is the opening for what we're getting into today, which is the Bible, our sole authority for faith and practice. Hey Amen. I preached not too long ago out of um, Matthew 20 and spoke, to, spoke a little bit about uh, being a servant. And, um, you know, it just led into the issue of authority and you know, Luke chapter 4 uh, is a portion of Scripture where uh, Jesus was tempted or brought, you know, the devil took him and tempted him. And 
said in verse uh, number four, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the Bible is um, the, the foundation for everything we believe. Yes. And mm-hmm. so what we do, where we go, what we say, how we act, um, it, it's all found in Scripture, and it is how we live our daily lives. Just like we would eat food to nourish our bodies, we should be in the Bible, and the Bible should have our uh, should be the one uh, true authority in our life. So, um, I, th- I think that's being. It's one of the reasons I'm I'm kind of frustrated a little bit about. Um, all that we're seeing here, not, not a lot of people understand it, I suppose, or think maybe um, I'm being too nitpicky. I don't know. But, um, you know, I, I think if, um, if we believed the Bible and we lived by the Bible, um, we wouldn't be so quick to seek out man's approval. And I think right. years ago, our, and I know our church has a history of standing up for the Christian school education uh, movement back in the 70s. And actually, the founding pastor was key in that here in Nebraska and was actually taken to the county uh, jail every day and fined $200 a day for running his Christian school. Uh, but he believed that it was um, God's um commands and standards and God's mind and he got all that from the Bible that they that the church should be able to have a Christian school and educate uh, the children according to the Word of God and uh, he was willing to take that stand and willing to go to jail for that because of what he believed and uh, of course there was a litigation there was uh, the courts involved and all of that and ended up getting, worked out. Uh, But what was impressive to me was the humility of that pastor to quietly say, well, this may be what the government says, and this is what they're threatening, that they're going to put me in jail. But we're going to to stay faithful through and not shut our doors, keep, keep our doors open and keep running our Christian school. And if I have to go to jail, I have to go to jail. And he, he did that not to be arrogant. He did that not because he was against his government. Mm-hmm. He did that because he was for the Bible. Mm-hmm. For the Word of God was his sole authority. And, um, and so as I see our movement pride themselves after shutting down their churches for two months, um, being excited that they actually got the government to acknowledge the, the essentialness of church, um, I think we're losing sight of what God's called Christians to do, and that is live by every word that proceeds out of the out of the mouth of God. Mm-hmm. Right. That that needs to be done, and we can do both. We can work with our government. I'm not opposed to working with our government. I'm not opposed to asking them to acknowledge that. You know, all those things are fine. I think we've already done that with the First Amendment. First mm-hmm. Amendment, it's there, and it tells us we have the right to worship the Lord um, and that the government can't interfere. Now, we can fight about that all we want, but um, if we're living as a Christian first by the Bible and the Bible doesn't contradict, then there's a way that we can continue to be obedient to Scripture mm-hmm. and, and do what is right and um, not draw unnecessary attention to ourselves uh, looking for a fight. And that's my concern is that, that we, we talk about having Baptist distinctives anymore, but yet it's like, man, let's not waste an opportunity to, um, to make this bigger than what it has to be. And, you know, who was it recently, recently we heard this said somebody in the Obama administration said something like never waste, uh, the opportunity. What was it? What was it? Yeah, never waste a crisis. Never waste a crisis. Never waste a good crisis or something like that. I don't know. But it's the whole idea of if if you keep a crisis going, eventually what happens is the people will petition the government to, because of the results of that crisis, the people will 
uh, petition their government for relief of uh, of the crisis, therefore producing a, a, a people that are dependent upon government. God's people should never be more dependent on government than the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Um, oh, I know I was going to say this about authority, too. Since you guys didn't jump in, I'll just go ahead and hit my second point here. <laughs> but, you know, Jesus was dealing here in Matthew chapter 20, and he was dealing with uh, James, John, the mom, uh, their mom coming to Jesus and asking to be... Um, to sit on the left hand, right hand of Jesus. And of course, Jesus said, you know, this is not my uh, position to give out. It's not my right to, that's something that the Father in heaven has to do. And then he says in verse um, um, verse 25, but Jesus called them unto him and said, he's talking now to just the disciples, you know that the uh, princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. So he's addressing those that people that would normally look at in government. You look at the prince, you look at the king, you look at, um, and what do they do? They exercise dominion, they exercise authority over them. Mm-hmm. But in verse 26, it's interesting, Jesus says, but it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. So this is where we understand that in the ministry, pastors aren't authority figures, we're ministers, we're servants. Mm-hmm. And uh, where we get the confusion is uh, when a man of God will stand up and preach, he's preaching God's word. Right. Uh, in John chapter 1, we're told that Jesus is the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, from the foundations of the earth, the word always was and always will be, was God. And then, you know, verse 14 says Jesus was, uh, the word was made flesh. Of course, we know that's Jesus. You stand up and preach the word you're going to preach with authority. Mm-hmm. It's not my authority. Mm-hmm. I have no authority. This Jesus said, "You don't get the authority of kings. You won't. Ha- kings can look at you. Princes can look at you. And say you have to do this, or this happens." And that's the that's the conflict we just had: is governors and president and people in elected officials that have authority. Mm-hmm. They can come in and say, you have to do this, and you have to do this, and you have to do this. Um, we look at that, and we elevate that. We look at that, and we say, wow, that's, you know, that's amazing, or we're fearful of that. And God says to pastors, you don't get that authority. You, don't, you can't walk into your church and say, okay, everybody, you have to all wear suits, and you have to all wear dresses, and you have to believe this Bible, and you have to do this. But we preach like we should. Mm-hmm. Right. We preach like we should, and because you use the Bible, the Word of God, the Bible is our final authority. Mm-hmm. When the Bible is preached, authority is demonstrated. Mm-hmm. It's right. not the man. It's not the man behind the pulpit that is standing up and saying, I have supreme authority. It's the Word of God that is put out there that anyone, anyone that hears the Word of God knows that Jesus has authority. They know that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, you know, we talk about the, the fun, the, these, um, these distinctives of being a Baptist. And we say it's uh, the Bible and our soul is our sole authority, but more and more Baptists are not living like the Bible mm-hmm. is their sole authority. Mm-hmm. They're right. living like the government's their sole authority, like right. their paycheck is their sole mm-hmm. authority, like their family is their sole authority, right. like their friends are sole authority. Sole authority. Uh, anything else but the Bible. If you really believe as a Baptist that the Bible is your sole sole authority, then when you hear something preached that's authoritative, you go home, search the scriptures daily, find out whether or not it's so, and you don't get offended. Why do you think Psalm 119, 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. The Bible has its authority. And if we as Christians accept the Bible... Mm -hmm. Because we as Baptists mm-hmm. say we accept the Bible as a sole authority, then it doesn't matter how hard it's said if it's from the Word of God. If the Bible says it, that's what we need to do. Mm-hmm. And right. so, you, I mean, we can even go further and say, you know, one of the problems we have in our movement is 
we don't even have pastors up standing up in the pulpit anymore saying with confidence that the King James Bible is the Word of God. That's right. Mm-hmm. So it's whatever scripture, and right. we know that uh, multiple, multiple Bibles are, it's like the Bible of the Month Club going on. <laughs> and, you know, and you'll find there's scripture that has been taken out, uh, scripture that has been, you know, uh, totally perverted. Um, and, and when you have that, you have no you you have no way to recognize what is authority and what isn't. Exactly. So it's that the inspiration and the preservation of the Word of God is wrapped up in that Bible authority. Yes. And it's important we don't remove that from our teaching on Bible doctrine. I feel like a lot of Christians would, a lot of independent fundamental Baptists would sit back and go, "Well, you know, I don't really see how I'm not accepting the Bible as my final authority. I mean, I still go to church." You know, the pastor still stands up and preaches the Word. I think more than anything these days, I think it's a matter of how much of the Bible in your life is the sole authority. Mm-hmm. Because I think, we've, I think Baptists can grow comfortable with certain standards or certain biblical precepts that don't intrude in their lives, don't really make them separate and be holy. Um, whatever, it may not be a deal of separation, it might just be anything... But the, it's not just the Bible is the sole authority. It is obviously not just what you want, not just pick and choose. It's the entirety. Every single jot and tittle in the Bible in the Bible is your authority. A lot of people are taking it sole authority for their faith, but not so much their practice. Right. Yeah. Right. They're, it's their sole authority when they're in church. And we all know what the Bible says. If you don't do it, you don't believe it. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is why I was, I was going to bring that around to when it comes to church being important. And right now, you know, it's pretty popular among our ranks for a statement to be made that church is essential. And we all believe that church is essential. Um, But the truth is more than ever after this whole thing, you know, we should all be going to church a lot more than what we did. That's, that's, you know, Sunday morning should be essential to us. Sunday night should be essential to us. Mm-hmm. Wednesday should be essential to us. Revivals, not just any when extra, you feel like it. yeah, not just when you feel like it. Not if you have to work or don't have to work. It is if something is essential, you absolutely I, I need it. I just don't understand how anybody can can feel like uh, so overjoyed and it, with such glee and emotion because Donald Trump said church is essential and that he's going to override governors if they don't open churches. I mean, that's all great and fine and dandy, but how is it that we have rallied to petition and to to demand that and to get the politicians to say that and agree with us when we have no intention of actually living that? Hmm. Right. <clears throat> or, or, or preaching that strong. Right. I mean, let these guys who did all that stand up and say, okay, now that we did this, y'all better be here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, so right. much tomorrow. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, we're going to have a revival Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for four weeks. Y'all better be there. They're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because they don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I had made this statement to David. I said, man, I'm so glad that we have uh, Trump 1025 now. Yeah, you know, not Hebrews ten twenty. It's Trump ten twenty five. Yeah. He said you can go to church now, so it's mm-hmm. okay. It wouldn't be. I I want to say, I feel okay. So people would think that 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 we're saying, you know, man, the president shouldn't have said that church is essential. No, that's fine. Well, and for those people, well, hang on. Yeah. For those and for those people who championed that cause, I don't think that there would be any sort of um, any looking at it kind of like eh, if your church had been open the whole. COVID-19 crisis mm-hmm. and you went to try and get there and you went on news, news, all, all, all these different things that people have done mm-hmm. to, to, to push the church's essential narrative, which is great. Church is essential. Mm-hmm. But if it was treated like it was essential before this ever happened, this I think it's happened. disrespectful. I think <laughs> exactly. it's disrespectful to God. If we, after Donald Trump comes out and says what we already know to be true, we stand up and are more bold than we were before. Mm-hmm. On the fact that, you know, we're proves we were cowardly before. It it just proves that we have more respect for our constitution than we have for the Bible, which well, brings for us for our politicians. For, for our politicians, which brings us all the way back to what we're talking about. Bible's and right. and people may be like, oh, you're nitpicking. It's all. Yeah, that's exactly. the very point of what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The entirety of the scripture is our final authority. That means Hebrews ten twenty five, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. So much the more. So much the more. You know. 
we don't even have to get into that, but just what we already have, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, it is a Baptist distinctive for you to believe that you should be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday the whole, night. The whole idea is addressing issues from the Bible. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's core to what we believe. That's what a Baptist is. Yeah. You know, so if you just, let's roll back the time, the tide. Roll it back. We voluntarily shut our churches down. It wasn't demanded. No. We voluntarily, not because there was a law or decree or martial law, not because it, we voluntarily shut our churches down and went to live stream because of a health scare. Okay, now let's stop for a second. We volunteered. So nobody was making us. It wasn't Romans 13 against Hebrews 10, 25. Right. That's, right. that's what they made it about? Mm-hmm. Like there's some kind of an argument? No, nobody made us. It was a mm-hmm. recommendation. And, and what we had is pastors who said, uh, fell to that prey to those critics out there who said, you don't love your people if you have church. And, and they were scared what people were going to say about them. Or they were scared if they got one COVID case out of their church, that was going to destroy their ministry. Folks, we've got a bigger God than that. Mm-hmm. And that's the yeah. craziest thing. But that is that is because they've so lived. And that's where the Bible's not. The sole they, authority that's of That's exact. They have lived by opinion. And let's put, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, that brings even a bigger how, issue. What, what's, what direction is everybody else going? Well, I, right. You're exactly right. But that that brings to the root of, like, why did churches shut down? Was it was it a matter of the government pressuring them to? No. Uh were the preachers themselves actually scared of COVID-19? I don't know. I can't say. I'm not in their churches or different churches. But it makes you wonder if it wasn't pressure from people who, who like, like a majority of our culture, is running in fear mm-hmm. of this thing. When the truth is, if we were as Christians having... You know, I, I say this as a bit of a joke. When, we first, when this whole thing first started, not right at the beginning, but near the first start of it, JT and I were out. I think... I don't even remember what we were doing. I think we were just soul winning. And we went into this elderly lady's, lady's house and started giving her the gospel, talking to her. And one of the things that she said, which we kind of chuckled at because it was kind of like, you know, eye roll. Okay. Kind of spooky. She was like, you know, she said, well, I believe I'm a Christian, so I can't get COVID-19. <laughs> and so we kind of chuckled at that. We kind of laughed. We're like, oh, that's not exactly how it works. But where, <gasps> where is any of that faith when it comes to obedience to God? Gone. Where is they look the at belief? It as, they look at it as irrational though. And, right. and I, again, here's, here's the balance. We're not saying you go out and surround yourself with sick people. <laughs> right. You don't say, oh, I'm just never going to get sick. That's not true. You still use wisdom, and mm-hmm. I say this probably every broadcast, wash your hands. <laughs> okay, so you know, I, I don't like, disagree with anything you're saying, but I, I'm going, I feel like we're going away from the basis of what we're, we're trying to talk about. What bothers me is not that we're, that we're uh, actively working with our politicians to get them to acknowledge church as essential. That doesn't bother me. Right. Mm-hmm. It doesn't bother me. What bothers me is nobody's acknowledging how as a movement we bailed out on church. Mm-hmm. Bailed out on by God. choice. <laughs> so where is our Baptist distinctive? And you wonder why I freak out about our evangelist hanging out with Southern Gospel music groups? Yeah. Because if you go back to Bible authority, you'll see that if they're not believing the same thing, you shouldn't be hanging out with them. Right. I mean, it's all Fit based on Scripture. God and speaks. we have a whole movement, a bunch of people who've got big names, built big churches on the back of just simply going, what do people want? Let me say these key phrases. And it, it, we all were appalled when Nancy Pelosi ripped up the speech. Hmm. We were all appalled. And throw her in jail. That belongs to the people. And she just, you know, and... We were freaking out, but yet a man of God, a man of God can take something from their government, right or wrong, is not the issue. It was given to him by his government and be just as disrespectful based on working himself up, working himself up when the truth is, was his door open for the last two and a half months by choice. Mm-hmm. By choice, that's hypocrisy at its finest. It's stupidity at the very least. Right. And Christians need to be smarter than this because there is going to be a day when we're going to be seriously tested. Very soon. And if we don't decide that we're going to live as Christians based on what the Bible has commanded us with authority, right. we've got to make our mind, what do you believe about church? 
doors will be open. Mm -hmm. I will unlock them. If they come lock my doors, I'll bring bolt cutters. If they put me in jail, then they'll put me in jail and we'll go from there. But guess what we're going to do? We're going to have church. And if I, yeah. guess what I'm going to do? The, not... You haven't heard anything about the Amish. Mm -hmm. You haven't heard about anything about the Amish. You know why? Because they'll, if they shut their building down, they'll just go to somebody's house. Mm -hmm. They'll just keep having church. They're going to meet together. You're not going to get them not to... Nobody's, you haven't heard anything about them because they quietly mm -hmm. live what they believe. Right. And here's the thing. If every Christian who said they believed in church and is screaming church is essential, just didn't make a fuss, saw the wisdom and say, you know what? The Bible's already spoken. We know what the truth is. And if every Christian believed that church was essential and they just kept having church all the way through this thing, I'm not saying there wouldn't have been problems. I'm not saying there wouldn't have been confrontation. But guess what? The whole world would have known without any presidential declaration mm -hmm. right. that we believe church is essential. Yeah. And I promise you, mm -hmm. the same reason that people are going and, and making a big fuss about this is because they know we'll win. If it goes to the Supreme Court, if we get citations, if we get, we'll just, we'll go to the court. And everybody knows that the decency of mind and the rule of law will play out mm -hmm. and we'll still win. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in, in, instead of that, they make a big fuss about it. But you know what? If we would have just, if we really believed at the beginning and see our Baptist distinctives are being attacked. Right. And it's a perfect right. picture of it because we don't really believe mm -hmm. what we say we believe right until it's convenient to politicize it right. mm -hmm. so I can get a book deal Correct. or get on TV. And that's and how it is. And the, the historical fact and basis for this distinctive comes from what every other Christian denomination that is spun off of true Christians. Right. When it started back in, what, third century with Catholicism. Mm -hmm. They don't believe the Bible is their sole authority. The You know who has Trump over... The Bible, the, the Pope, Pope. The who king. has Trump over the Bible in Lutheranism, Luther and his doctrines, mm -hmm. who had Trump over the Bible in Calvinism, Calvinism in his writings. Mm -hmm. So it, through history, Baptists, Waldensians, Baptist history, in, it, it just as we have always taken the Bible as our only and highest mm -hmm. authority. Not that we disregard everything else or any other authority when it comes to civil government, because the Bible obviously in many places supports civil government. I mean, right. God allowed David to be king. He allowed Saul to be king. He allowed those kings to rule with authority. Mm -hmm. It's not like God does not. And it, God says throughout the Bible and Scripture that he has set up, he has put down. He, every authority in, in, in government is set there by God's allowance at mm -hmm. the very least. Right. So if we were, if you to come out and say that uh, we as Baptists are going to disregard every bit of government, then you are are stupid and don't believe the Bible in the first place. Right. You haven't read your Bible and what God says. You haven't balanced out what your opinion is versus mm -hmm. what God has said, and you're just trying to take one small aspect that or one verse out of the Bible, blow it out of proportion, and that's where we get cults. That's where we get movements. That's, That's where, where we get you loose. You get loose. You, you right. totally go away from the Bible. And what has we seen through the last couple months through this crisis, quote unquote, mm -hmm. of COVID-19, which, by the way, honestly, has not been a huge amount. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could look back in, in history for different plagues or think, oh, let me just take it back to the Bible where, where King David, he counted the people without God's permission. And what did God do? Say, God, I'm, God told David, I'm going to judge you because of your decision to disregard my, my authority. And, this is, and he gave him three choices. And one of the choices was a famine for three days. And how many people died in three days? Mm. 60,000. Mm -hmm. And how long has COVID-19 been going? Yeah. So yeah. we've got it easy, people. Hmm. If we want to look at our nation and say through our population, you know what? Yes, it's a terrible thing. Families have been affected. Businesses have closed. People have lost jobs. It is a crisis. But you know what? If you are panicking, if you are g going about saying, oh, what am I going to do with like a chicken with their head cut off? You are not grounded. You are not grounded mm -hmm. in the sole authority of faith and practice like a Baptist as is distinct from every other religion is supposed to be. Well, you are not showing your colors as a true Baptist. I agree. The, and that's... 
sad part about that is that they'll just, uh, you know, the argument is, well, the size of the church, the size of the church, you know, and, and I would agree, man, it'd be nice to see a large, large church kept their doors open right. all these weeks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't mean anything. You're just, you're a small body of believers. You don't. I gotta tell you something. We're mosquito, a you're a mosquito with a yeah, megaphone. Yeah, yeah, right. Mosquito you know what a lot of mosquitoes with do a, with, a, with new megaphones. Malaria. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but here's the thing. I, I think every pastor has the right to do whatever he wants. I mean, I, I, if he wants to stand in his pulpit and tear up uh, something from the from the government that's been issued to him, he can do that. If I was a member in his church, I'd probably amen him. And if I if I don't want to. I don't want to. So I'm not debating is it right or is it wrong. My point is, is you got to ask yourself, is, is are, are we putting this out there on social media? Are we tr putting this on TV? Are we trying to, for sensationalism, I would think that you can only measure that by consistency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Well, it's, it's, you know, a lot of bark there. But where was your bark when they when you were voluntarily closing your doors? Mm -hmm. yeah. And where was your bark when they told you you had to keep them closed? And, you know, I'm all for yeah. us saying, hey, wait a minute, open these doors. Wait a minute, don't tell me. But I'm not going to wait for them to tell me it's okay. Right. If there's a consequence, I'm, I'm going to pay that consequence because it's right to do it. And I, I would say if it's right to have your doors open... It's it's based on it has to be based on scripture. Yeah. And so. and the truth is honestly, when we get back to it, this is exactly what you said at the beginning of your monologue. Really, the milkiest of milk issues. This is just going to church. This is church attendance. Well, this Hebrews. Just, this is just obeying God's word. Exactly. Hebrews ten twenty five. Taking to what it says the... and practicing it in your life. Well, Many you know, things. Hebrews was written to the Hebrews. I had somebody exactly. actually say that this week. Hebrews was written. It well, wasn't written to the church. Okay, we should tear it out of the Bible then. Oh no! Get rid of the Old Testament. No, what is the church? Get rid of the. What is the verse? What is the verse? Didn't you use a verse? Uh, yeah, no, First Timothy and Timothy. Second Timothy three sixteen. Yeah, all, all scripture, scripture is given. Is given by by wait a minute, how much scripture? God. Oh, I don't know, all of it. Yeah, but all it was except for Hebrews. Except the ones that were written to Hebrews, right? Or the Corinthians. Or, or to the Ephesians. Or the Romans. Or the, or the Romans. Philippians. Right, you can't use them. <laughs> or the Galatians. Oh, you can't even use Timothy Man, because it was written is, to only Timothy. This is Bible oh. doctrine. Thick, thick, and Matthew. Thick. It was written to Matthew. Man. I'm just kidding. By, yeah, to Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> but here's, here's no, the thing. No, that one we can keep. It's written to everybody. <laughs> know, okay, well, messing. we can keep the Gospels. But yeah. here, here's, I just thought about this just now, and this is kind of sad. Honestly, sitting here thinking for the last minute or two, I can count on one hand, one hand, that's five. <laughs> how many times, and not just during COVID-19, COVID-19 time included, how many times the verse Hebrews 10, 25 has been tweeted since I got on Twitter back, Twitter back in like 2000, I think 15. I can count. I can't remember. Other people. You mean besides Other people. Besides Pastor, yeah, besides Pastor he <laughs> puts it say, out every week. But uh, I'm saying. At least once a week. Yeah. I'm a, I'm by a, other people. Mosquito with No, the honestly, yeah. think about it. Honestly, I, I can think of. Right. I can, I can think of one other person recently tweeting that out. I literally cannot think of one even before this COVID-19 when someone said, hey, Hebrews 10, 25. But I can think of how many times, you know, like rejoice in the Lord or happy things, good be things. Kind be one kind to one to another. another. Stuff like that, which is not wrong. It's hey, good. you know what? But Everybody agrees meat? with that one. Your well, opinion agrees with that one. Yeah. And that's the, it's socially acceptable. Social media. And you're but right. that's where it is. And you're right, Frank. We did have the police called on us twice twice and we did deal with it well but not because um uh we were being political but because we were obeying the bible when it says that we're supposed to be part of our community reach out dwell peaceably with all men our police station appreciates our police officers appreciate our government because we don't we're not rubbing our christianity in people's faces going eh, you're my enemy we didn't our put government on this... doesn't think we're, we're we don't treat them like an enemy right and even, even with all this COVID, they're not our enemy because I still have my free will. Mm -hmm. And my free will that God gave me, I can use for liberty to do right or for an occasion to the flesh. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you this, I'm keeping the doors open. What kind of disposition? Oh boy, here we go. Are all of these churches having by resisting? <laughs> That's right. You know, I think about what well, kind of. The, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry right. to bring in. A, That's a very bad disposition. Yeah, it? it is a bad disposition. 
No, I'm saying, you think about it, I feel like during this time, our church is only, our, our good name in the community has gotten better over the last couple months. I right. feel like, I I don't, our, our police um, station, our authority there, our local government, everyone knows. People in general. People yeah. in general. But you think about, I mean, you got to pray for these other churches that are in these areas where if they haven't built an, a relationship with their local government or authority, and then they disregard what they say, try having a, you know, a law appreciation day or, you know, yeah. law enforcement. And, appreci- and it's going to be a lot harder mm-hmm. when they're like, yeah, well, you don't care what we think, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just, yeah. it's just another angle you can look at it on, but ultimately. The bottom line is if we look at this, something as simple as church, and we're supposed to establish what we believe on church from the word of God and its authority. And we fail at that. You really, you really think that you're, you're paying attention to the daily things as a personal Mm -hmm. Christian one-on-one with the, you know, our whole movement, our structure of who we look at as heroes and leaders. And we, Oh, brother, so-and-so doctor, so-and-so. And and I'm all for that when they're, when they're standing on the word of God, but when they, they give this form, that's this look like they are, but when they go back and do, they live their life completely opposite that, that confuses me. So, Hmm. You know, I think it's important that we understand that uh, as Baptists, we need to get back to our distinctives and, and we need to live by the Word of God. Yeah. If Can there I... is, um, if there are churches out there that have a bad reputation with their local governments, then you have not been paying attention to the Bible either. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I mean, the Bible uh, <laughs> has the Jesus was nearly released every... by his government. Situ- yeah, right. Um, but there were governments. Uh, they, never mind. How did Jesus? How did Jesus walk during his earthly ministry? Did he lead a campaign against the Roman soldiers? He probably wrote government? a book and had a book signing. Yeah, that's well, what he did. He did write that's a book, but he, no, I, no, I'm saying he probably <laughs> yeah. like you know printed right. a book. My, and, my point and had a book is, is just how, just think about it. That's kind of changing the subject, but think about how he handled it. He t- he spoke the word of God to masses of people who came to hear him. Mm-hmm. He spoke to his disciples, taught them personally one-on-one. He, when they came and got him and took him prisoner, he stood before the authorities. Mm-hmm. And his answer was this. Matter of fact, there's a time before that where they said, what authority do you have to do this? And he goes, I have a question for you. And if you can answer that question, then I'll tell you what authority I have. And and they couldn't answer the question because they knew Jesus knew how to ask trick questions. And um, but then it when wasn't it was, a trick question. But, but when he was held, thing. when he was held, and someone said, "Don't you understand uh, that I can?" Uh, and Pilate said, "Don't you understand that I can?" Um, I have the power to release. Yeah, you I have the power to release you or, or you put you to have death. No power. And he says, "You don't have any power except my Father in heaven give it to you." Mm-hmm. You right? know, it's like, how did Jesus? How did Jesus? Did he? Run out and get all the people who were tired of Judaism or J- Jews and and uh, and the, the Pharisaical Romans. and the Romans right. and and did he say okay let's rebel against them take up swords and right. and and or you know go out there and cause political issues and problems he just did he what just was traveled right. and preached yeah he just stuck to the mission that God had given him his father. and that's the way I think we should do it now you've heard a lot of things that I've said. You've read a lot of my tweets. I know I've got friends that don't necessarily agree with me on this. I love them dearly. It doesn't mean I'm not changing my, I'm not not being friends with people. But I'm not going to be quiet about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm also going to not let the majority look at me and go. Pff, pff, pff. You say you're a Baptist. Where's our final authority? Mm-hmm. If it's our final authority, you can't wrinkle your nose at what the Scripture says. Right. You can't just say, well, 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 well. And so far. If you do, you're an aptist because you have no good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> did you just think of that or did you? No, I've been thinking about it for the last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, and if next week you, like, don't, quote, you don't agree with that one, you're, you're a. a p- 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to get some. A patist. A patist. A patist. Well, here's uh, the thing. Right. Ultimately, aptist. you're pathetic. Uh, you, oh, one thing I've you been know, wanting to say something for the last little bit. I'm trying not to cut anybody off. Um, and I think I think Dad kind of made this point, but I just want to say it again with a little more, uh, not clarity, just just say it again. If that Baptist distinctive of church, every time the doors open, 
was held as a distinctive, we would never have gotten to this point. I find it amazing that when you talked about, you know, Jesus and how he handled the authority, if you look at the stance that is has been taken from the beginning of this, it's always been one extreme or the other. One extreme is, shut all your churches down. Don't defy government. Or defy your government. Stand, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's it's never just been, we're just, we're just having church. Yeah. We're just We're just having church. And guess what? When you're just doing what God says, it doesn't matter if someone says, shut your doors, mm-hmm. or if someone says, defy government. You just, why just are we always surprised? Have in church. Why are we always surprised when our government, the majority of them are probably not saved. I'm not going to say they're not, but probably not saved. Mm-hmm. Why are we always surprised that they would come to the different, a different conclusion in the Bible or what we believe? Mm-hmm. So why villainize them? Why are, they, why are they here? They're lost. Yeah, they're lost. Especially when the Christians in your own church have the same opinion as them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though they're not. Yeah, milk, very milk. What I was going to say about the church thing is like if we had been teaching, if we had been teaching that church should not be missed, not as a matter of character, but as a matter of conviction and principle, because character will never go as far as a conviction will. Sure. Conviction mm-hmm. will carry character. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the care to go to church, but you have conviction you go to church, guess what will happen? You'll right. go to church. Right. Yeah. And it won't matter. You'll Guess what you'll tell that job? Sorry, I ain't working Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. I ain't working Sunday night because I believe church is essential. Right. And if every person who is shouting it from the housetops right now believed that before this ever happened, just like you said at the beginning, this would have never happened. I wonder happened. if our attendance would go up if we believed that. Don't but we mis- wouldn't have gotten the exposure or the book sales. So Well, let's, let's maybe... Whatever. Here's the thing. There are, don't be mistaken, I guarantee there are thousands of churches across America who Probably. just quietly kept having services. Probably. Yeah. And for all of they're them. They're not on the news. And for all of you. They're not on the news. They're, they're not. Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, do, you don't have to take the B off your sign. Oh, amen. <laughs> so, I mean, there's always, you know what I just said, what would be a great broadcast, maybe in a couple of weeks, line up a bunch of churches, maybe pastors or sister pastors or whoever, to call in and tell us how they kept their services open. I feel like that's that what did. we would hear. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's possible. Well, but I honestly, um, honestly think that's a good majority. Majority of those guys are not about. Um, right. They're not about anything other than the area that they're pastoring, and so, and, and maybe they don't. Uh, they don't see the the beneficial the benefit of doing that. And the truth is, if our churches would just live the Bible, if our pastors would just lead by the Bible. Mm-hmm we'd have a lot more open doors and yes. instead of leading by personality and I hate that sounds bad, but these guys are leading by their personality. They're leading by what people think of them. And personally, if they're going to, if my town is going to think something about me, here's what they're going to think. Well, that church ain't closing down. Mm-hmm. And you know, to have my wife stopped in Walmart by another Baptist pastor's wife, and said, we've been praying for you. We understand that you haven't shut your doors yet. And I said, no, not yet. We're not going to. Another Baptist pastor's wife yeah. in town mm-hmm. said, and very kindly, very respectfully. Good. You know, if that's what we're known for, mm-hmm. well, remind me not to apologize. Got people at gas stations asking me, so did did you guys did you guys shut down? No, we didn't. Mm-hmm. It just the fact like, that you could say no. Almost always, they're all like, like, almost everyone that I've ever said that to was like, good for you guys. Yeah. That's like literally their reaction. Yeah. But you know, you're just a mosquito with a megaphone, so. But the, but the people with money? Mosquitoes reproduce really quickly. <laughs> so we're not wow. mosquitoes. <laughs> not sure whether that... <laughs> Here's the thing. We Swarms of mosquitoes. <laughs> yes. Here's the thing. We're not making any friends by doing this broadcast. Not one. Matt, if you I look think, at our, look, our watching. Down. Yeah, I'm just saying, we, you can know that we don't, we don't have an agenda behind what we're saying other than the truth. I mean, I'm not going to be asked to come preach on a national platform somewhere. You might. Because I preach this kind of thing. You might. Doubt. One time. You to <laughs> one time. Doubt it. The biggest <laughs> mistake. <laughs> That's all this, and then they give everybody tomatoes to throw at me while I'm preaching. Yeah. So. But hey, Some cabbage. I'm just saying, can we ain't stopping either. Right. We're not going to stop. Nope. Yeah. nope. We're going to keep putting the truth out there. And, and why? Uh, because that's what God mm-hmm. exactly. commands us to do. And that's where What authority do you have to do that? Hmm. Uh, God. And here's, here's something to think about. 
When, when in the Bible, obviously, if we look at the Pharisees, and everybody is against the Pharisees, and should be because they all did the stuff for outward appearance, for men's show mm-hmm. to do that. You know what? They had over 600 laws and precepts and ordinances that they had to keep on a daily, everyday basis. And they were, they were strict to do that. And they wanted to do that. And, and for the most part, they did it with a, 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 an honest and sincere, There's and no I use word. that word sincere for a reason, heart. But what happened with Paul? The Bible says he was a Pharisee. He said of himself, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. And mm-hmm. God allowed him to record that about himself. Mm-hmm. And he lists all, all the attributes that he had prior to that. But when he got saved, did he drop his standards Mm-mm. that he learned from the scriptures in the Old Testament? Because the answer is obviously no. Mm-hmm. So if Paul still found it profitable, like the Bible says when he wrote to second to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is profitable. I think he genuinely meant that mm-hmm. personally. All scripture is profitable. Did he believe that keeping the law was getting him to heaven? No, of course he didn't. Because he had put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But why did he keep faith and practice according to the scriptures? Because he knew it pleased Jesus. Right. And that's it. And then at this point, just let me say this, because we did use some current events to make our point. I just want to be very, very clear. Very clear. I do not pastor in the areas that have had the struggle. I do not pastor. I have a conservative state. I have a conservative uh, governor. Uh, more conservative than conservative than most. And, um, and so maybe I have some... Um, less resistance, but I don't feel like I have any more freedom. And I want to I want to be clear here that I think every man makes their decisions based on um, what they know and the sincerity of their heart the best they can. Now, sincerity doesn't always guarantee that we're right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I just. I just want to make it clear I'm not against petitions and I'm not against um, standing for what's right. I'm not against trying to influence your government. Um, I've been to every Awake America or uh, Capital Connection in D.C. since it started. Every single one went into every. I've been. I have formed relationships with Senator Sass, uh, Adrian Rogers, or Adrian Smith. Um, uh, you know, Deb Fisher, uh, all of the representatives, okay, and even you. people that aren't uh, Fortenberry, that's in uh, another district down in Lincoln, and uh, Don Bacon. Bacon, who's in Omaha, mm-hmm. um, because no other pastors from Nebraska come to that mm-hmm. meeting. Mm-hmm. I go in, I get the books, I go visit with them, I pray with them. I am for that. God's people uh, being united with. Uh, the people of government, I think that's so important, so important. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not against that at all. I think we need to continue to do that. H- however, I think in, in a national crisis like this, we have to be careful that we don't, uh, that, we, that we're very slow to just jump on board, um, especially when there's something, some fear pushed behind it that, that we think about are we having to abandon a core principle of what we believe mm-hmm. believe in order to give the picture that we're on the same page? So that is, that is my main thing. But as far as the petitions, uh, as far as going to your, to your governors and having meetings, I encourage everybody to do that. I would just wish they would have never... Been necessary. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wish they would have just all just said, you know what, we all believe the Bible, we're going to keep our doors open and, uh, and let them... You know, they don't have the man. It's like uh, they just legally opened the beaches in New York and the governor said, but if we see you in the water, we're going to pull you out. Okay. I I don't know what kind of stupid juice that man's drinking, (laughs) but if all the people go to the beach and all the people get in the water, they don't have enough policemen to come get every single person out of the water. That's just a stupid, empty, vain threat. And the people get to the point where they go, well, let's just test you on that. 
And that's where you have true rebellion. Mm -hmm. When the truth is, if you had some leadership that stopped and went, you know, you can't give an order like that and expect everybody. You just can't. Well, there's no way to enforce it. Mm -hmm. And there's no way. There's no way that our government could enforce every church shut. We, we, they don't have the manpower. You can employ the National Guard, mm -hmm. and you would not have enough people to stand guard at every church building, mm -hmm. every place of worship, every mosque, every mm -hmm. Catholic church, every Methodist church. Every, you would not have the manpower to stop that. Right. There's no way. And you know the proof is, now that a few handfuls of people are rebelling against this thing, they're getting letters. No police are coming. They're not pulling people out. They're not locking the doors. They're sending letters, cease and desist, desist orders, and, and threats. But folks, we, gotta, we should have started with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's start with that. So I'll make it clear. I'm not against these guys. I know it sounds like I am, but I'm, I'm asking people to think here mm -hmm. because we are headed in to the end times and we are going to be tested a lot more than what you think. And I'm afraid that my granddaughter and my grandkids aren't, aren't going to have a prayer if I can't influence my Christian brothers to stand a little bit stronger. I don't desire to divide our movement. I desire to sharpen our movement. Mm -hmm. So let me just say that as clearly and as plainly as I can. And uh, we will continue to do that. If some uh, misunderstand that and just feel like uh, I'm, I'm causing division, I apologize uh, that you see it that way. Um, but but um, it's biblical. And nobody has challenged me on my biblical premise for what I believe yet. So mm -hmm. I'll keep standing on that. All right. We're going to go ahead and go to the next song, City of Gold by the Old Fashioned Quartet. This song was requested by Mickey. We'll be right back. Rapes of Wrath. And honey, that sweet nectar. Well, we're putting both these segments together, Grapes of Wrath and Honey, uh, because um, Brother Peter went so long in his section, yeah. segment. Yes, so, yes, it was my fault, um, I'm sure. <laughs> but grapes of Wrath, okay, so real quick, um, I, can't, I, I can't tell you that uh, I have a lot to complain about. I just did it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, I don't like, I don't like when, you, when you hook something up and it doesn't work. It's not plug and play and just doesn't automatically work. You got to do a bunch of stuff. Like I That's agree. funny. That's right. close to what mine is. Mine is yeah. when you get a link like sent to you or it's on Twitter or some whatever. Yes. And you press it and it, it doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah. It's like. How's that crazy. again? Your grapes are wrath? I thought you were talking about like the uh, jet ski. Like you hook it up, you turn it on, it just doesn't work. It's like you sit there trying to start the jet ski. For... No, I was talking about the microphone. Oh, okay. Right. So yeah. pretty much everything in life, it doesn't plug and play. So Yeah, right. Um, grapes of wrath. When I, <laughs> wow. when I don't have anything, that's what I'm most frustrated with. Uh, I've got one. Go ahead. Little critters. Hate them. Your daughter? Walking on wet oh. yeah. <laughs> cement. <laughs> oh yes, oh, yeah. yeah little, so yeah. we we poured the concrete uh, walkways, oh, and while they were drying, and we weren't around, <laughs> we had a squirrel do something with his little paw prints on the front walk. <laughs> we had birds do walk on the the he concrete. Was drawn, I hate babies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like that. But after all our hard work, yeah, JT had to ruin it. All right, you well, had all that time to think. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, what's my grape for wrath now? Yeah. Um, lack of sleep. I, 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 it's like, I, why do we have to sleep? Why? God, why, why did you why curse us? Why is it necessary? <laughs> when I we get to heaven, it'll be so awesome. just not have to sleep ever. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. That's what Kathy. Well, oh, yeah, away. that's right. All right. <laughs> yeah, so it's your turn. So okay. up, up next, what, what do we like? I like sleep. <laughs> this is about her. <laughs> this is a special. Man, honey. Crazy. Okay, yes. A uh, special segment. We're going to talk a little bit about what we love about the country. This is Memorial Day is on Monday. What do we love about America? Taco Bell, American flag. Slurpees. Mm. I was going to say Ford, but Dodge. <laughs> you were going to or say Ford. 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 Well, Ford's good. American made, but, you know. So is. Well, that's what they like to say. What's your, <laughs> what's your honey, Pete? 
Oh, I, I was serious about Slurpees, but... <laughs> oh, that was it. Food. Food. <laughs> Thanks, Food. Jimmy. Hey, what else is there to be thankful for? <laughs> Amen. Food. I love the freedom of our country. We, we, uh, we have that because of the um, men and women who are willing to die. Keep, right. you know, the, the people that serve our country and, and um, fought the wars in the past and, and are signing up today to serve uh, and will someday be those men and women we are thankful for for mem- on Memorial Day that, that will defend our freedoms in the future. You know, we have this this wonderful place where we can buy microphones, we can buy technology, we can put it together in a small little place like North Platte, a town of 26,000 people, and that's it for the next 350 miles. You know, it just, mm-hmm. it's amazing to me. And then to, to be able to put out our beliefs and our faith, um, we wouldn't have that if we didn't have people willing to. To, ble- to to stand f- mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. what what is right. Mm-hmm. So I'm thankful for that. Well, that's basically what mine was going to be. Was just thankful for all of our soldiers who have given their lives and will never know their names. Yeah, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands that died on the battlefield, and we have no idea who they are. Very very powerful memorial to visit is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Yes, we've mm-hmm. never been yeah. there. Makes that a point, a bucket list. Item to mm-hmm. view the tomb of the unknown soldier. It makes you stop and really think about all those people who never knew who you would be, mm-hmm. but were willing to lay down their life for you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode, episode 17. Can you believe it? Of the Brook. We hope that you'll join us again next week, same time, same place, for another fun filled show. David, Pastor Peter, JT, thank you for a great broadcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you joined us today on YouTube. And before we go, we would like to leave you with this week's verse of encouragement. Pastor. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And with that, we will play the final request. <laughs> part of the verse. <laughs> uh, you didn't know that was in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. And wow. with that, we will play the final requested song, I think- Come Thou Fount. I put a gap in there. <laughs> Dave, Have a good night, now. everybody. <laughs>